Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, come on in, come on in and get comfy. I am so grateful to be back for season three, episode three of the Business Boot Camp series presented by Co America Bank and Discover Her Worldwide Incorporated. I will start by acknowledging that. COVID-19 affected communities across the globe. And after having to cancel several of our annual signature events back in 2019, we spoke with our friends at Comerica Bank to identify what our next steps to make an impact would be. We wanted to still create some type of experience for leadership development for entrepreneurs, but we were virtual, we, we couldn't be in person. So we had no clue what to do. And so in 2020, we put together 12 business workshops on various topics designed to equip entrepreneurs, small business owners and nonprofit leaders in order to do our part for economic sustainability. You see, our goal is to educate and equip business owners and leadership professionals with the strategies, the resources, the tools that you can apply, apply to your business immediately. And so we, it went off without a hitch. It was so incredible. Tons of amazing dynamic speakers, guest experts joined us. And so we returned in 2021 to host the second season of the Business Boot Camp. And now we're here again for season three of the Business Sense Boot Camp series. And so combined, we want to share this because it's a really big deal. Combined over the last three years, these virtual segments have organically reached over 15,000 people. I want that to sink in. There were 7,000, more than 7,000 virtual platform views live, 130 guests, and we've partnered with over 24 other subject matter experts. And so again, we're here for season three because it's still important that we remain proactive in increasing access to the resources, to tangible knowledge, and that we just continue to develop the professional skills as we do our part and continue to develop other leaders and serve in the capacities in which we're called to. I know some of you are new to me. And so if you are, hey there, I am your host, A. Margo Blair, leadership development consultant and founder of Discover Her Worldwide Incorporated. Our vision here at Discover Her has always been to bridge generational gaps between diverse groups of women. And pre-Rona, we would do that through in-person professional and personal development experiences, such as conferences, trainings, as well as seminars. But as we have navigated the post-COVID world at Discover Her, we have created virtual experiences such as this in order to continue to teach the fundamentals that may have been missed, equip leaders, with actionable steps that you can apply to your business and your life immediately. And these experiences also allow us to grow our professional networks. Again, in person, it was an opportunity to meet and connect with leaders, but virtually, we get the experiences that we have today, whereby we are joined with other leaders from New York, New Jersey, Georgia, Arizona, Texas, uh, Florida, Washington, California, Nevada, and so many other places. And so it's super important that we just take the time to acknowledge that these experiences, the boot camp experiences, are super transformational. Now, before I introduce our partner at Discover Her, or at, our partner with Discover Her for these boot camps, I do have one really big announcement to make. And today is an actual really special day here at Discover Her Worldwide. And so if my screen will work, I'm going to share it 
because today, not only are we excited for the bootcamp experience, hopefully the screen popped up and I'm now super small in the corner, but we are excited to celebrate Woman in Action Day. The mayor of Phoenix, Mayor Kate Gallego, presented us with our fifth proclamation where by today, April 21st, 2022 is declared Woman in Action Day. And so uh, I know you always hear me say, I'm excited to be here. But again, today is so, so special for the Discover Her team. And we are just excited that we have the opportunity to share this incredible announcement with you all. So again, we're really grateful to have had the opportunity to be here, um, to do our part with making an impact in the lives of other business leaders. And again, we would be remiss without thank saying thank you to the company behind the yes of bringing this vision to life. So Summer Fawcett with Coverica Bank, she is the National African American Business Development Manager for Comerica. Summer, it is so great to see you. It is always so good to be with you and have you a part of this vision. Absolutely. Hello. Good morning. Oh my gosh. What a wonderful day. I mean, that's just, that's just amazing. Women in Action Day. Like you yeah. kind of have to take a step forward and be like, this is what we're doing today. Come on, people. We're, we got it. We are moving forward. This is, this is how we make our stamp. Um, in the year 2022. Uh, I am extremely um, honored and humbled to, to stay part of this, um, th this new work that we're doing as business owners, as women, women of color, people of color. I mean, there's just so much that we have to uh, retain and so much we have to take in, especially when you're founders and CEOs of your own business. I mean, a banker doesn't know everything, a CEO doesn't know everything, but when everybody kind of comes together in a community style fashion, you start learning from things that you didn't even know you were supposed to know. So that's why these programs and this, this opportunity is so nice because you hear the, the side of the values of someone who's been like that, they're experts in their, in their area. And you're getting that, that information. Like I can do high level information, but if you want to do a deep dive, you stay and you listen to the people who are giving you this information. Um, and then Margo, everything that you're doing for the community, for people, who do own their own business. I mean, this is just an amazing platform to listen, to share, to ask questions. It's just a fantastic way to keep the momentum going and owning your own business and knowing that you're certainly not alone because apparently 15,000 people uh, also want to know what's happening and what they should do with their own business. So we're just happy to be here, happy to be um, a partner with Discover Her Worldwide and I'm um, excited for the future of what, what's to bring. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And so again, today we already said it is super special, but it's really exciting the conversation that we're gonna be having today. I have a really special person who's joining us uh, to lead this discussion, but I really think it's important that we set the foundation for today so that the people who are with us are aware of how to navigate the discussion that we're going to be having and that they know to come back and watch the replay that don't just listen live and engage live, but come back because this is the conversation, the one we're having today is something that needs to start happening if it has not yet begun. And so I want to also share that um, we want you to be active participants in this discussion. We, but what is, exactly does that look like? It means having your notepad and pen at the ready. It means when you hear something that really resonates with you, let us know in the comments. Just say amen or re-share what you heard that spoke to you during this discussion. If you would like one of us to provide additional clarity, ask that in the chat. And then we will have a final call toward the end of the segment. And we'll just do, just check to see if there are any other last minute questions. And so again, if you are with us at live or even watching the replay and you receive any quotables, be sure to shout us out 
using the hashtag that is inside of the comment section. It is a little bit of a long one, but what it allows us to do is to go back after we're done with this live and see what were your major takeaways. And so when you receive a nugget and you share it to others, or even just share this live video, what you're going to do is use the hashtag Comerica Business Sense Bootcamp series. Again, it's long, but it helps us identify your comment from today's discussion. Finally, we would like to thank each of you for joining us today because we know that you could be anywhere else in the world, but you are here with us to learn, to grow, and to prepare to make a greater impact in the lives of those you are called to lead. So again, we thank you. I am really, really excited for today's discussion, which is on preparing for generational wealth. And again, this conversation is so important because this 90 minute conversation will center on being positioned for generational wealth, a conversation around financial management. We are going to be discussing the importance of dismantling generational poverty. We're going to talk about the keys to effective financial management, which is fitting because April is Financial Literacy Month. Um, we are going to be talking about developing a healthy relationship with money, as well as prioritizing table talks about family finances. And I am so excited to introduce our guest expert today, Cheyenne Muhammad, my friend, my sister, welcome. For those of you who do not know Cheyenne, Cheyenne is a certified financial coach, a John Maxwell speaker, trainer, coach, a Dave Ramsey coach. If we're talking about money, Cheyenne is the woman you want to talk with. Um, I also want to acknowledge knowledge that not only is she a financial literacy guru, she is also a real estate investor, but something that I have to acknowledge um, for women, it's Women in Action Day. Cheyenne also dedicated 12 years to the Army. And so sister, we thank you for your service, not just in the financial world, but thank you for your service for our country. So Cheyenne, without further ado, I know these people are like, girl, stop talking. Let's talk about bridging, prep, being positioned for generational wealth. So hello, my friend, how are you? Hello, good morning to you. It's afternoon for me. Yes. Uh, first of all, let me just say happy Woman in Action Day. Congratulations. That is amazing and so exciting. Um, I'm honored to be here. I appreciate you so much for uh, allowing me to join the conversation. Um, and Summer, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. So yes, ma'am, I'm excited to be here. Yay, yay, yay. So I won't even waste any more time. I'll, I'll, I'll just have us dive straight into this discussion, Cheyenne. So let us just lay that foundation. Why is this discussion on fi uh, of financial literacy important? Why do we need to be having this discussion today? Um, you know, let me just start by saying um, one of the things that you you finished up with when you as you were introducing me was um, about my time that I spent in the military. Um, so I come from a military family. My father was military. My mother served 26 years in the military. My stepfather served 30 years in the military. I come from a military family. Yeah. Um, and so definitely discipline was important in my family, you know, routines, habits, all of that was important. Um, you know, I spent 12 and a half years in the military myself, went to war um, twice, you know, ended up becoming a registered nurse. You know, um, my, my last assignment was being responsible for the intensive care unit um, that was the receiving station for all the Iraq and Afghanistan injured people. So I have done some, some really important work in my life. Um, but when I got home after all of that, 
um, I had a 527 credit score. I didn't have any money saved. Um, I had more bills uh, than I had income. And so um, I found myself in a situation after having done all this important you know, work and it impacted all of these lives and I couldn't even get an apartment on my own. And so, um, and so that really started me on this journey to financial literacy. And I remember going to one of my loved ones and, and probably some of the viewers can maybe relate to this situation. Um, but I remember going to one of my loved ones and saying, it was actually my brother. And um, I asked him, you know, I'm in a situation, you know, I'm trying to get back on my feet. I can't get an apartment on my own. My credit is terrible. I don't have any money saved. Can I stay in your um, vacant, you know, he had a vacant um, condo. I asked him if I could stay in his condo. And he said one word that changed my entire life. And that one word was no. And so, and, and, and I call it to this day, the no that changed my life because mm -hmm. had he told me yes, he would have enabled me to stay in the situation that I was in. He would have enabled me to stay, stay in the situation. I would have been, I would have become dependent, you know, on him. And so I'm so grateful for who he is and that he said no, because a lot of us will open our doors, family members, you know, struggling, suffering, you know, they don't have money, you know, whatever the situation is, they lost a job, you know, somebody got sick, somebody passed away, you find yourself in these life situations that do happen, you know, grocery prices going up, gas prices going up, you know, people in and out of work, you know, all these things, you're not being paid enough, rent is going up, the cost of living is going up, you know, all of these things, and you find yourself in a situation, and most of us will throw the doors open to family and, and help, right? Because we are a, a caring people. We are a loving people naturally, right? We are naturally um, nurturing. That is who we are. So we'll throw those doors open, and what we do is we enable we enable our loved ones to be dependent, right? Instead of teaching them how to fish. And so I had to learn how, to, I had to learn how to fish. I had to learn how to get out there and get it on my own when he told me no. And I'm telling you, it, it shifted the course of my entire life. I would not be where I am today had he said yes and opened his doors to me. So this conversation is just, is, is vitally important, especially given everything that's happening in our, in our country at this time, mm. huh? I said, it's a sweet spot for you. I, I hear it. I totally hear it. Yeah. Yeah. This conversation is, is, is just so important because um, I remember reading um, one of my mentors, she kept posting on her social media page, you know, maybe a year or two ago about that we are heading into a financial winter, you know, a cold financial winter, and some people are going to really suffer. And I kept thinking like, um, you know, I don't get into the, um, the doom and gloom, you know, but I know her, I respect her. And I kept saying like, what is going to happen? And here we are, my husband just sent me an article this morning saying that um, grocery prices that are already high right now are expected to increase three to 4%. You know, we are, we are seeing and have been seeing for the last two years, empty grocery shelves, yep. you know? And so and it's not just a, a, a problem here in America, it is a worldwide problem. And, and this uh, war that's happening right now um, in the Ukraine is uh, exacerbating the issues. And so the people who are gonna ex be exposed are those people who are not uh, financially prepared mm. for a financial winter, cold financial winter. And so we've gotta have, we gotta have this conversation and we all have to start getting prepared no matter where we are, it, right exactly where you are right now, you have to start to take action right now so that you can protect yourself and your family. Again, you, you, you've you already started the discussion, Cheyenne. The first question that we, we were asking here is, um, have you always managed your finances well? And you shared your story, right? You shared that there, the, you came from a family where discipline and routine was important, but then you were released from the military and it was a completely different story where you had to essentially bootstrap it for a while and figure out what your next step 
would be. So we've already answered that question. Um, on the tail end of your answer, you said this, we have to get prepared. We have to do you, to move forward now. And so that, that's, uh, that's what I want us to unpack next is how do we get prepared with what we have? How do we take that first next step? What is it? Yeah. And so um, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, so let me just say that, you know, in the story that I just talked about where I started, um, I was on unemployment. So when you get out of the military, you get un unemployment like any other, you know, job loss. Right. So I was on on unemployment. And um, so where I was, I started reading. I started reading books about money because I never wanted to be in a position where someone could tell me no to something I actually needed again. Um, and so I started reading books about money. And you can't just pick up one book, you know, today, I'm gonna read this book, this book is going to have all the answers, and I'm good. No, you have to it, you have to continually, you have to continually input and the minute you take your finger off your focus off of, of understanding and becoming more and more financially literate, you're going to fall backwards. I know this because I've, I've been there myself. So 20 years ago, being on um, being on unemployment, I started budgeting then. I still have the notebook, Margo. I still have the notebook um, where I first started writing down, this is what I have coming in. This is what I have going out. And I keep it as a reminder of where I come from. I keep it as a reminder of where I come from, right? Because we always want to stay humble. And so um, I started writing down every single penny, nickel and dime that I had coming in and what I had going out. I started being disciplined about saving, even with the little that I had on unemployment back then, my unemployment was $222 per week. I remember that. Wow. <laughs> um, it was $222 per week. My car note was $397. And so I just started with writing down every single penny that I had coming in, right? And um, because you have to have a plan for your money. You have to have a plan. So the word budgeting sometimes intimidates people or it just sounds like it sounds too controlling or whatever, but all it really is, is having a plan for your money. It's having a plan before the check hits your account. And that is really um, the starting place is really starting to um, capture what you have coming in and what you have going out and then what you need to be doing with your money, whether that is saving, you know, whether you're saving to start a business, you know, whatever that looks like for each person. Um, and then the other thing that I understood is that I needed to have, I needed some other streams of income. Unemployment wasn't cutting it. So I had to have some other streams of income. And so um, the thing that I started doing is thinking about what I could do to make some extra money, you know, to make mm -hmm. some extra money so that I would have, because a lot of times we're, we're looking at our money coming in, we're looking at our paycheck and we're saying, you know, this is not enough. You know, Cheyenne, somebody might be thinking, Cheyenne, how can I save any money? You know, how can I, how, how can I start a business when I, I don't even have enough to pay my bills? Well, you got to figure out what you can do to get some extra money in, to get some extra money come creating a plan. I realized I didn't have enough money. And so I, I started to figure out what I was going to do to make some extra money. And I, I did. I had multiple different, um, multiple different streams of income. And is that you can make money and, and they're on your brain. They're in you. All of us have gifts and talents. We all have additional ways that we can make money. It's just that you haven't been, um, we ha you haven't tapped into it just yet. Again, this is really, this is so important that we begin this discussion, right? And that we're talking about what are the steps? What are the next steps? to take. And so I want to talk about a few things that, that Cheyenne mess mentioned so that we can really drive this point home. And so Cheyenne mentioned three really important things. Okay. One is reading books about money. Super important. However, I want to also remind you that she said, read continually. Right, it wasn't just picking up the book once, it was reading continually. I wanna add, read different perspectives about money so that you can identify what do you 
actually believe about money. There is a conversation that we're going to continue to have in a moment. Yeah. where we, we begin to talk about money beliefs. So I'm not going to go too far into that just yet. But when you're reading these books, go deeper and understand the stories behind the messages that are being shared within these books. They're, a lot of them are giving you the strategies and the tips, but understand the stories of the authors. Where did they begin? As Cheyenne said, she had the principles from the beginning, mm -hmm. but then life hit and she had to now apply the things she knew, right? So I wanted to say that piece. The other two pieces that she mentioned were about budgeting. The word budget, again, this is gonna go back to this belief conversation, this money belief conversation. For years, when I heard the word budget, I was like, but I'm not broke. Why do I have to, why do I have to be on a budget? That was the mindset that I had for a while. And having the mindset that budget meant broke was keeping me from building wealth. Come on, somebody. No, I'm kidding, we're not at church yet. But me thinking that the word budget meant broke was keeping me <laughs> from building wealth, okay? And so I, I, I know that there's at least one other person in the room whether you've been saying that exact statement, because that might be a Margoism, whether you've been saying that statement or no, there's been this uh, interference with you actually getting a pen and, and writing down these things to actually say, what is coming in and what is going out? Okay, so I wanted to drive that point home. A budget is a plan to have for your money. Thank you, Cheyenne, for saying that because that put it into, even for me today, it put it into perspective. And I, I, I really do pray that it put it into perspective for some others as well. Um, before we go deeper, Summer, do you have anything to chime in on, on what Cheyenne mentioned about the preparation? Again, I know you're a guru in this uh, discussion. And so I want to, to invite you to share about the, the, the first next step someone can take in preparation for financial literacy or better financial management. Uh, you know what, Cheyenne was absolutely on point on everything that she said. And sometimes it takes multiple people to say the same thing over and over for some of us to get it. So we say this same thing in different workshops and then when people come into the bank, um, but it's not always on the personal level. It's typically on a business level. And when you have a budget for your business, okay, let's put it simple. You're not getting lending if you don't have a budget for your business. It's called a strategic plan. It's called a business plan. And if you don't have it, you're not getting money because as a, as a third party, we can't see what your projections are. We can't see what you what you can control. So if you can't manage your day to day, how are mm. we supposed to know you're going to mm. manage what's given to you? So it, it kind of goes in. I mean, it's a deeper thought on what budget really is, but it's just to prove not only to yourself, but to others that are looking at the way you handle your money, if you can handle your money. So um, and then, of course, reading, I mean, just knowledge, getting knowledge and don't always de default to YouTube or Instagram or TikTok for financial <laughs> advice. It's not always correct. And if you don't know how to sift through the junk, then I would stick with businesses, financial planners, financial advisors, even if you don't have the dollar, just like Margot said, she wasn't ready to budget in her opinion because she, was, she, she wasn't broke. But sometimes when you're broke, you still need a financial planner. You need to know where the next steps are. So um, that's just, it, it's just, it sounds basic, but it, it catapults you to the future of what you want to do with your, with your money. So yes, ma'am. Again, spot on. And I, I talk about this often is we have to go back to the fundamentals. We have to go back to the fundamentals, the fundamentals that may have been missed. We said that in our opening today, right? Um, we didn't need to worry about that right now. So, but then you get so far along in your business, but you never learned how to read a profit and loss statement. And now you have money and you're like, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do. Or you be, need to now start paying business taxes, but you never 
have ever had a conversation with your banker. You've never ever had a conversation with a CPA, right? Now, again, the conversation can start to change because my hand is raised. That's where you can reach out to any guru in quotes, because now you're in need or it's now a desperate place for you. And you start paying people who are unqualified. And now your business taxes are filed and you're out some money that you should never been out. I'm not speaking from any personal experience or anything, but you have to know these things in the beginning, even if you're not ready to utilize them yet. Even if you're not ready to utilize them yet. So again, you brought me back to a place, Summer. You brought me back to a memory. Anyway, let's continue. I really want us to continue this conversation because it's, it's again, we're, we're talking about being positioned for wealth, being positioned for wealth. Before we can I, talk about how to step into wealth, we also have to talk about breaking generational cycles. Cheyenne, what is most important about moving away from generational poverty? What is most important about moving mm. away from generational poverty? We're going there. Um, you know, I'm glad you said generational um, cycles as, as opposed to generational curses oh. because it's really it's really I, in my opinion I really don't think uh, some things are not a curse it's just habits you know it's just generational habits that have been passed on you know and so it, it's not really a curse so I'm, I'm glad you said that um, you framed it that way um, you know when it comes to your money or any progress that you want to make, it starts in your mind. It starts with your mindset. And so sometimes you have to break away, not sometimes, but you have to break away from the, from the impoverished mindset. That means that for a season, you may need to move away from family. You know, you may need to move to the other side of the country so that you can break away from the mindset. Sometimes you can't see um, outside of your world where you are. You can't see outside of your world. You can't see out outside of what's in front of you every day. And um, in order to break away, we got to get away. You know, we have to get away sometimes. Um, so I personally, once I got out of the military, I moved all the way to the West Coast. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, invite the environment is so very important, Margot. When I, when I moved to Phoenix, I was around people who everybody owned a house. It was just natural. This is normal. This is you like, who doesn't own a home? You know, um, the people that I was around. And um, so I'm a, I'm a nurse. So I was around doctors and nurses. I got to visit, you know, the doctors would have um, events in their homes sometimes. So I would go get to see their homes. And, and, and so um, a certain environment and a certain mindset became, um, became very normal for me. So to see anything else was weird. It became odd, you know? And so I, I, I felt like I had to elevate it automatically the people that I was around shifted pulled me in their direction and mm. so on the other side if if the people that you are around have a poverty mindset you're going to be pulled it's not about not loving your family you know not wanting to be there um it's just that if when you want to make a shift when you want to make a tremendous shift you have to make tremendous changes. you got to make those big changes. And, and a lot of times that is just getting out of your environment. So maybe you're not someone that can move across country, right? So what you have to do, when I didn't have friends, when I didn't have, um, you know, quote unquote mentors um, or friends that talked about money, I found my mentors inside of books. So I started, I read so much. I read so much Susie Orman, Dave Ramsey, Robert Kiyosaki. I read so much that those influences started to drown out the poverty noise that was around me, right? Oh. And um, there have 
have been times over my adult life where I've been, I remember living in a neighborhood in Phoenix in Surprise. I love, love, love Surprise. But the people in the houses around me, it was always, you know, we're so broke, you know, um, you know, I'm struggling to do this. It was just such a, and, and so that, that mindset started to weigh me down. I had to move. So I moved to Anthem from Surprise and it was because of the, it was because I couldn't do the environment. The en environment wasn't conduce conducive to who I was working to become. So um, when you don't, when you can't necessarily move, you have got to drown out that your positive influences have to exceed your negative influences when you can't necessarily pick up and move. You've got to surround yourself, whether it be books, when you get in that car, you got to be, your car needs to become a university, a university, get yourself on audible and get you some books so that on your commute, on your way to work, you are filling your mind with positive. Because it, it, because it is shifting who you are, shifting um, your mindset. And that is absolutely necessary with any change, any dramatic change that you're trying to make in your life. So you've got to change your environment. You've got to shift your mindset in order to break some of those generational cycles. We, we, we have to let that simmer a little bit. We, we, we have to let that one <laughs> simmer a little bit for the people in the back. This, okay, first of all, I didn't say this in the beginning. Cheyenne Muhammad, we're going back to your bio. She Cheyenne Muhammad is the wealth doula. Okay, <laughs> she is the wealth doula. And so I had to put some respect on your name when I dropped this quote in the chat. Um, you said, when you want to make tremendous shifts, you have to make tremendous changes. I don't want people to just skip over that. I don't want people to skip over that. You said so many other great things too, but this one, this is a, a, a silent lesson, something that is so impactful that if it simmers, this statement can, can, can sprout and then grow in so many different directions. Because what you didn't say is just leave your family in the dust. That's not what you said right? What you said is you have to choose you and, and, and you have to put yourself in environments or remove yourself in from environments that no longer serve you. Do you see what I just did? Like I'm saying more than what you said, but I'm saying exactly what you said, just in a slightly different way that makes sense to me, right? And that's why I wanted to emphasize this one statement here for the other people in the room who would say, but I can't leave my family, but I'm all I have, I'm all my friends have. I'm the only one who's gone to college. I'm the only, my, my family depends on me. Let's pause because majority of us are people of faith. You are carrying a burden that is not meant for you. Let's be very, very clear here. You, I was here. I was trying to be other people's savior. And every single time I found myself pouring from an empty cup because, because I was depleted. When I chose me, knowing that my purpose was so much greater than me, knowing that I'm called to lead and develop other leaders, I know that very well. But just like on an airplane, they say, if you are with somebody who needs assistance, put your oxygen mask on first. We need to stop trying to put other people's oxygen mask on before we put on our own. Okay. So while we are having this conversation about being positioned for wealth, we need to take the time to really understand what we're saying here. What Cheyenne is teaching, what Summer is reinforcing, a, 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 a corporate executive who is in a position to say yes or no to your business. If you are not prepared, yes, business, you wanna have things together. But from my perspective, the work I do is developing the person behind the leader, developing the woman behind the subject expert, however you wanna spin it. This statement of when you want to make tremendous shifts, when you wanna get into a position of wealth, you have to make tremendous changes. 
Cheyenne, I, I want to throw it back to you because I know there's something that you want to add about this before we move forward. Um, please share that. Is, is there a resource to, to continue to reinforce the conversation that we're having? If you have the link, you can feel free to share it. I don't, I don't have the link, but I, I remembered it as you were talking um, about leaving your family um, mm. because, because of who we are as a people, because of who we are as a people, right? Um, and we are a naturally loving, caring, giving people. I remember in my 20s, Margot, I read an article that said the financial downfall of the Black woman is her family. And I am telling you that I am, that's probably, that article was probably, the, the, the no that changed my life, that was probably number one. Mm. Number two was that article. The, the financial downfall of the Black woman is her family. And when I read that, when I read that, I found my own personal no. I found my own personal no. Ooh. No, I can't send money to help somebody get out of jail. No, I can't send, I'm gonna be in the dark. Um, no, I can't send money to help you pay your rent. You know, you know. no, I can't send money to help you. You know, all those things, because we all get those phone calls. If, if you have a little bit of something, your family is probably calling on you uh, for things, right? And I found, and it, and it sounds to some people it might sound heartless, but it's really it's really not because I needed to put my own oxygen mask on first. I needed to put my own oxygen. I needed to get myself. I, I needed. I understood what you just said that I can't pour from an empty cup, right? And so this that magazine article help me to find my no. And I understand that my no does not mean I do not love you, right? It doesn't mean I don't love you. It doesn't mean I don't care that your children are gonna be in the dark. It doesn't mean that I don't care that your son is going to jail uh, because I'm saying, no, I can't send you money for that. It doesn't mean, you know, it, it doesn't mean any of that. I still love you and I love you enough to tell you the same no that my brother told me that changed my life. Now, what you do with that no is not my choice. I, I don't get to decide that. Only you do. Well, I know I what I did with the no, and I know that no is the reason why. Oh, I thought I heard somebody saying something. No, um, going. But, yeah, you're, you're on it. Yeah, so, um, you know, so, so the no is not a lack of compassion, but if we think about, because we are a naturally spiritual people, right? And the Bible says, teach them how to fish, don't feed them fish, right? Not, the, not a direct quote, not the, not the actual scripture, but I know that I can better help you by teaching you how to fish, right? Than, than feeding you, right? Because if I, if, I, if, I, if I give you fish, you're gonna eat one time. But if I teach you how to fish, if I teach you how to fish, family, because you're watching me on social media, you see that I talk about credit, you see that I talk about financial literacy, um, you see that I'm out here empowering people, you see my life elevating, I'm teaching my family how to fish. So whatever I didn't give you back in the day, I'm giving you now through my life living. My fam you know, I'm teaching you through people coming to my 25 acre ranch that my husband and I own. I'm teaching my family, I'm teaching them that if you be responsible, if you be disciplined, if you develop multiple streams of income, this is, this is how you can get here. So I'm teaching you, I, I'm, I'm not feeding you the fish. So I do care. I love you enough to, to teach you rather than to give you, right? And that article really helped me to see that. Again, spot on summer. I'm gonna throw it to you in a moment um, because she is Cheyenne just said so many incredible things that I know, I know you're sitting there like, oh my goodness, yes, yes. One thing that I wanted to speak to that you mentioned, Cheyenne, is the teaching piece. That's what I was gonna say next to follow up your point that you were making. And though we're not just going to give right? Because if you just give and you don't teach, there's not the, the, the tangible action steps. How do I replicate this? You're not going to know what to do. Um, I'll be super quick to say this piece before I throw it to Summer is 
I talk about living the legacy that you will one day leave behind. And when the first time I said, I didn't even know it was powerful, but the first time I said it, um, somebody got up during a presentation and they were like, say that again. And again, like I said, I didn't even think that was that powerful at the time years ago, but I realized that the message that people were teaching was leave your legacy behind, leave it behind, leave it behind. But when I started studying that, it just, it didn't make sense to me. I'm like, wait a minute, you're leaving something behind, but, 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 you're, but it's not always the exact blueprint or these people can't ask you questions or what have you. And so this concept for me of living the legacy that you will one day leave behind turned into start living it today, whatever you're going to leave behind, live it today, but then bring other people along the journey with you that can be your apprentices um, and really take what you, what has been deposited in you to a whole other level. And so again, that, that, that teaching is the whole, you, you know, you, you, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink or, um, you know, making fish, making people, giving the opportunity for people to take what you have and then multiply it. I mean, there's so many other scriptures. We can talk about the parable of the talent and how the one per the one individual buried it, the gift, the talent, the money multiple times throughout scripture, the one individual buried it, yet the other person multiplied it. The one who buried it, it was taken from him and given it to given to the one who multiplied it, right? So these conversate, the concepts are all the same. I'll pause here. Summer, I always bring this question to you because your family, for me, is kind of like that poster board of family of wealth. Let's make money together. One eats, we all eat. So I'm going to throw it to you and I'd love your, your perspective on what this means right now, as we're talking about the importance of the moving away from the generational poverty cycle. And then again, being positioned for the wealth as a family unit. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it sometimes has to start with the head, right? It, it, it's, and it doesn't always, and you have to deal with whatever has been dealt to you. Um, but for my family, it started with my with my parents, and they they always kind of gave us a, a realm of do what you like, do you know, do what works for you. Make sure you have a plan. Do, you know, you're you're gonna do something with yourself. Um, just make sure that that's done. And it was just an always, always like a, like, oh, we're not proud of you. We expect you to do certain things. So well, they, they really weren't proud. They still aren't proud of us. Until, <laughs> maybe, I don't even know. I, I honestly don't know. My parents are interesting. Um, but when it comes to my siblings and I, uh, we decided when we were a little bit younger that, you know, you guys go into this industry. I'll go into this industry. You go into that industry. And then together, we can come together and, and make something extremely impactful. So, um, Margo, you know, I have younger brothers who are criminal defense attorneys. I'm in finance. My older brother is in marketing, social media, speaking. So when you put everybody together, we now know things that we didn't learn when we were younger, but we're able to teach each other and cover each other because I don't understand contract writing. I don't always understand the law. I don't know, always understand social media or marketing or how to implement certain things within the business, but I certainly know finance. And so when we came together and we are bringing our finances together and we have businesses that we've started um, and we were like, okay, I need $10,000 from each and every one of you guys to get this. Up. Okay, done. Write checks, put in the business account. So we know how to move, but we move with efficiency. We move with an expectation of what's going to happen. Mind you, it wasn't like this 10 years ago. It, it certainly wasn't. And we came from poverty. We understood poverty. We were like, we don't want to do this again. We know that every single business that we make and every single business that one of the other person might make isn't going to be the be all end all, but it's a stepping stone to get to the next step. And that's one thing I think a lot of people um, kind of weigh on themselves when it comes to being in business, whether it's by yourself or with a family, is that just because you don't reach that goal of being a million dollar business yet, 
it doesn't mean that that's not the future. And it doesn't mean you have to hold on to that business until it reaches a million dollars. Sometimes businesses were just meant for you to get that hundred thousand dollars to move on to the next business, get that 500,000 to move on to the next business. And that's something that we have to understand. It's not failure. If you don't get a million dollars in your business, it is allowing you to get to the next step of getting to the million dollars. Not everybody is an overnight night success. You can't just post things on YouTube or social media and expect to get ads. I mean, that is fantastic if it does happen, but you can't plan for that to happen all the time. You have to have, uh, like Cheyenne said, multiple sources of income, multiple streams of income. I have income coming from all different areas of my life. And it's great because it gets me to that end goal. And honestly, my end goal is making sure we build this community and making it better that where when we leave it to where it is today. So if you want your family involved, you have to start that young. You have to start that early. And if you can't do it with your siblings or your family, you need to implement that into your children. And that is the legacy that will be left. Because if you only leave the money, guess what? It will be spent and there will not be a legacy. So you actually have to teach it. You have to implement it. You have to track it. You have to show it. And it's sometimes it's hard love, but it's something that's necessary. So um, that is what we have to say in regards to family ran businesses. You want to run your business as a family? It has to be written down. It has to be prayed over. It has to be strategic. It has to be a knowledge base. You're not going to fake it until you make it to a million dollars. You have to know what you're doing. Margo's on mute. <laughs> I just see her hands going. <laughs> I, was, I was getting ready to run around the room. I want to make sure everyone heard that. You cannot fake it till you make it to a million dollar bid. Like it just, it, it, it won't happen. It, it, it won't. Um, and here's the thing. From, from January 1 to December 31, everything starts over, right? In a year, the way, the way people look at the business world. So when we're talking about um, the, the whatever revenue you make for that one year from Jan 1 to December 31, you start at zero the next Jan 1, right? So if, if, we're, if we're talking about this in, in the business, you know, from the business perspective, from the business sense, you can make $1,000, $10,000, 100K, a $1 million in one year, but do you know how to do it again? Can you replicate that process? Is your process documented? Can you remove yourself from the business and your business run without you having to manually operate that? This, these, everything that I just said is all part of this conversation about building wealth. None of us can have multiple streams of income if Summer had to be physically present in all of her ventures her revenue, so it, it, it just wouldn't happen. Cheyenne and her husband, Ghazi, they, they, they could not run any business they run if they had to be physically present. Let, let's be very clear. Cheyenne, um, how, many, how many children do, do, does your family do exist in your family? Because I'm gonna make a point here. Tell, tell us, tell the people, how many how many We have kids? 11. We have 11, 11 from one to 30 something. <laughs> okay, and then, and then we also we're also having grandchildren in the conversation too. And, and here's the point that I want to make with this as we're talking about building generational wealth. So not only does Cheyenne have her and her husband, right? They, they, they have to tend to their relationship, but they have children. They have to tend to those relationships. Now with 11 children, they have to do stuff together and then individually so no one feels alone and singled out. Um, and then they have grandchildren, right? That they can take care of and then send back to their parents, right? Uh-huh. And then they also have these businesses as well, not one, but multiple. So again, this conversation about being positioned for wealth, it is so that they know financially them and their families are taken care of, but then they also can spend time with their family without working or without worrying about work, without worrying about exchanging money for time or time for money. It's different for, for the Mohammeds and, and for the Facets and, and for myself and my family because we have put ourselves in position that things are operating 
are able to operate without us physically present. And, and this is with a team or without the team. There are systems and processes that we have had to learn from experiences that without these things will not sustain. It's not sustainable, right? Money will not come in. Things will not work. Clients will be upset if they don't get what we said we were going to deliver, whether we're there or not, whether we're sick or not, they paid and they want what they were promised. And so pulling it back, right. when we're having this conversation, it's, it, it is business, but it's also personal. It goes back to what Cheyenne was talking about in the beginning about mindset. It goes back to what Cheyenne was talking about, uh, about budgeting, creating a plan for your money. And Summer reinforced that saying a budget is a business plan or a strategic plan, right? We talked a little bit about the money beliefs. We're going to go deeper here now as I'm, I, I just, but I wanted to recap some of the things because I'm seeing more and more people jump on the call. Okay. I wanted to reinforce that we're talking about how do we get prepared, reading books, understanding the stories of the authors, where they were and where they had to, the steps they had to take to get to where they are today and understand where, when they wrote those books, they're even further along than when they wrote those books, right? We talked about um, finding ways to leverage your knowledge base to make extra money. You know, and now we're, we're tying up this part of the conversation about what's important about moving away from the cycles of generational poverty. This discussion is so rich already. We still have a good 30 minutes to go. It's so rich and it's so necessary that we have this conversation. And so I kind of want to put a, a, a nail in the coffin uh, in, in sorts of this conversation of generational poverty. I want to throw this at, at both Summer and Cheyenne. Um, one point each, I guess, can suffice for this. But how does a person get out of and stay out of poverty? I'm going to ask that again. How does a person get out of and stay out of poverty? Either one of you ladies can it's, take it. To me, it's just the decision. Yeah, for me, it's just a decision. It's just, it's just you deciding that that's what, what you're going to do. That's it. It's just deciding. The steps will come. It's just making the decision that this is what I'm not going to live like this anymore. And and I and I take that from my my own life. Is just it was just a decision that I'm never going to be in this situation again. I'm never going to be in a situation where someone can tell me no to something that I need again. So it's just it's it's that simple. I, I don't even have any any way to elaborate it's just deciding that and it, and I think when people realize that the power is, is is in your own two hands it's not about what your parents did or didn't teach you it's not about what the school did or didn't teach you you know you don't have to be from a family like Summer's family um, or what they have evolved to you don't have to come from a military background you don't have to be a discover her you know um, mogul or any of that it is just you where you are whoever you are deciding right now that I am going to change the narrative from myself and from my, the people that I'm responsible for, my own children, my, fa my immediate family. It's just deciding. And once you, de once you decide that and you realize and that really sits in your spirit that the power is in your hands, everything that you need is gonna come your way to make that shift. And, and it's making that decision no matter what happens. It, if, if you make that decision today, when I made that decision, everything in my life didn't fall into place. Everything didn't just magically fall out of the sky. You know, money didn't just start growing on trees in my life. It's just, I made a decision and I started taking steps. Life would happen and, and waves and storms would come, but I didn't let them knock me backwards. I've had job losses. I've had people die. I've been sick. I've been out of work. I've been a single parent. You know, I have, I've been divorced. I have had all of those same life situations that everybody has had. I have made, 
I have made some, in the last 20 years, I have made some terrible financial decisions. Every, every financial decision that I have made has not been perfect, but I still had the decision on the inside of me that I'm still going in this direction. Husband died, I'm still going in this direction. Lost my job, I've been laid off four times. As a healthcare professional, I was laid off four times. I'm still going in this direction, right? Somebody's sick, I'm still going in this direction. It's no matter what happens, I've, I decided 20 years ago that this is the direction that I'm going in. In fact, Margo, it was J January 29th, 2002, when I made that decision. And ever since then, that's the direction I'm going, no matter what happens. So that it's that simple. It's it's just the decision. Some of the floor is yours. <laughs> yeah, I I completely agree with with Cheyenne. Um, and I, what I tell my people um, anytime they come for consultation with the the for profit that we are, yeah, the for profit or even the nonprofit um, mm -hmm. has to deal with you will never fail if you never quit. Like you will always get there if you just keep going. Um, and then when it comes to poverty, it's a mindset. You can have a million dollars in your bank account and still be in poverty. It's the definition of which I looked up. The okay. definition is the state of being extremely poor or the state of being inferior in quality or insufficient in amount. There's people with millions of dollars in their account and don't think that they're good enough. There's people with million dollars in their account and not making right decisions because they feel alone or they feel like they, they just can't do it anymore. There's people who commit suicide who have millions of dollars in their account. Poverty, it's in the mind. You can have $2 in your bank account or negative $2 in your bank account and not be poverty in the mind because you're not quitting. You're not giving up. You're still going. You have a starting point, but you're still going. And you have setbacks, but you're still going. You have some failures, but you're learning from them and you're still going. You keep going until you can't go anymore. And then you keep going. So that is what moves the, the, the needle when it comes to poverty. That's what people see. They don't, the people are going to look at you buying all your stuff, Gucci and Prada and all this other stuff that you think will fix your poverty situation. But I can guarantee you, Gucci's not going to fix it. Prada is not going to fix your poverty mindset. That's who spends the money. Guess who, who, guess who makes these, these companies rich? It's the people who get their tax returns and, and spend it all on, on something that they can't afford. That's who makes these companies rich. Not the people with wealth, but poverty is completely in the mind. And you can change that by like, and again, going back to the basics that Marco said, stating what Cheyenne said, changing your surroundings. You are the average of the six people that are around you. I have no friends. I'm going to be that simple. I don't have friends. I don't want friends. I don't make friends. I have my family. I have my kids. I have my businesses. If someone's in my circle, they can be there, but they're not going to stay inside that circle because I am the average of what's around me. I have to control what's around me. If I can't, can't trust the circle that's around me, then I can't trust myself. I have to know that they have my back no matter what. So you be careful with who's around you because you look around the, your surroundings. You look around the people that you hang out with. You look around the people you break bread with and have dinner with. You are the average of them. If you don't like that average, change your surroundings. Mm -hmm. Change your mindset. Mindset, poverty starts in the mind. Move it on from there. There, 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 you, there you have it. Um, I'm, I'm going to follow it up. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to follow it up with the uppercut by saying that we have to become disciplined in your decision making. And what helps me is that I have Proverbs 4, 25 through 27, according to the message version, in my back pocket. For those of you who need to dust off your Bible, what Proverbs 4 says is keep your eyes straight ahead. Ignore all side how distractions and your, the road will stretch out smooth before you. Proverbs 4, 25 through 27 is important in this context of wealth is even if your money is currently looking funny, even if you don't 
see right now, your situation right now is not what you desire, is not what you believe your life, your financial situation should be. If you follow the principles, the strategies, the suggestions that we are discussing right now, your financial road, the opportunity to build wealth will change. It, 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 it is, it, it will change. It's not, it might change if you do what you're supposed to be doing. It will change. Summer said, if you don't quit, you can't fail. Why? Because you're not quitting. You may pivot, you may change, you may do things differently, right? Fail fast, fail forward, fail often. I don't remember who said it. I read it in a book though. I know that much. But at the same time, when you put these things into action, you take the first next step and then you take the next next step and you take the step that comes after the next step, you're eventually gonna look around and say, I did it. I'm here. And of course, for the believers in the room, you know that you can't take any credit for it. We know it's God, right, for being the source. However, regardless, is the conversation is you have to put action behind these beliefs. Whatever you desire, you still have to put action into play if you want to see any change transpire. Cheyenne, I I'm gonna throw it back to you. Is there anything that you can add to this conversation around financial discipline? You know, what? So you, um, you know, uh oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I just popped you off mute because it was a little, it was a little fuzzy. The mic was fuzzy. Let's try again. Okay. Can you hear me now? No, it's, it's like, it's cracking. Uh, uh oh. About now. Mm -mm. Okay. Let me let me refresh real quick. I'll be okay. right back. We're gonna get this. Look, so we're we're having this conversation about dismantling generational poverty. We bring in scripture, and now Cheyenne's audio is not working. I need you to know now. If you if if you were on here and you were not a believer before, somebody knows what that means. I'm just gonna say that. But nonetheless, I, I want us to just take a moment and, and reflect over the conversation that we're having up until this point. Again, um, we wanna thank everybody who has been present during this conversation, who's listening in, who the, the, the chat here is, uh, in, in the VIP room, I'll say, on the back end is, is going crazy because this conversation is not something that's had every day. The, con the what we're getting ready to transition to, I, I wanna give uh, Cheyenne the opportunity to talk about financial discipline before we move into the last two parts of this discussion. But what we're talking about here is going to change the trajectory of people's financial situation. I'm gonna try not to get emotional here. People's financial situation and the legacy, their legacy for their children and their children's children. The information that you are receiving here, when you apply it, it's going to shift your life. Cheyenne, let's, let's see if we can talk about financial discipline. Okay, so, um, so Summer, said, Summer said that she doesn't have any friends, right? And, um, and so I thought about that and I thought back to when I was making, when I was making that, the, the big shift in my life, um, and how I pushed everybody out, completely pushed everybody out because I knew I was going in a direction. Um, right. And, and when you think about it, when you are, when your vision is clear, you know, where you're going, right. When you know where you're going financially and what what direction you're trying to take your life in um when somebody says hey girl can you come out can you go out with us tonight or hey boo do you want to fly to florida with me you know when you when you have financial goals 
right? Or when your children say, right? Because we, we, it, it's easier for us to say no to our friends, to girlfriends, you know, guy friends, whatever. But when our children say, you know, hey, it's my birthday, can I have, then it comes, becomes a little bit more difficult. But when you have a vision and you know that you're on a serious, intense, deeply, you know, intense mission to break these uh, generational, break just this generational poverty, then you, it's easier to find that no in you. I work with people, uh, financial coaching, I work with people regularly who, you know, we talked about, we've laid out the plan for them. We laid out the plan. This is what you need to do. This is how you're going to get out of debt. This is how you're going to save some money. This is how you're going to get your credit together to purchase a home. This is how you're going to purchase the home. This is what you need to have. A, we, we go through all of this. And then I, and then I get on the phone with them and they say, um, well, I can't do this this week because it's my baby's birthday. <laughs> I'm about to spend. Now we just went through all of your finances and we know that you don't have anything extra, but now you found some money for your baby's birthday party, right? And you're throwing a $600, $1,000, you know, birthday party. So, and, and it's little things like that, that, that knock you off track. They just keep knocking people off track. But when you are focused and you are very serious about the direction that you're going in, you don't let thing, you get the children, you get the children together and say, listen, mommy can't throw you a birthday party this year because we are on a family mission. Let's sit down at this dinner table and let's talk about where we're going as a family so you can understand why you can't have, you know, a birthday party this year. Let's talk about what we're going to do as a family so that next year we can plan you a birth, plan you a birthday party when we have the excess to do it. And so sometimes when you are on a serious mission to get to get to find that when you don't have the financial discipline naturally you can't have any friends you can't have any friends and i want to touch on something else um margo that i think is, is important here too an emotional lack we are spending money out of an emotional lack you know, sometimes we are trying to buy our, we're in poverty because we keep trying to buy our children's love. We keep trying to buy, um, you know, male friends, girlfriends, love. We're trying to buy, you know, people's love. We got to, we keep digging in this, pouring from this empty cup, spending money we don't have to buy somebody else's love, right? And, and some of us, some of us are, you know, our purse. You know, this, this gotta, this has gotta have somebody's name on it so that you can like me. So I fit in with you. What I'm driving has to say somebody's name on it so I can fit in with you, right? And those are all the things that knock people off of the course of breaking this generational poverty, right? I don't want Prada. I don't want a Prada purse. I'm not interested in that at all. I would rather go find some black owned business and put her name on my purse, on my shoes because that means something to me Prada will probably never know my name so I don't care about that I don't care about that stuff at all and so you know it, it, it is work it, it takes work to get disciplined but but even more than the work you got to really be serious you can't play around with this you're not gonna uh, Summer just said you're not gonna get to a million dollars haphazardly you're not gonna get there haphazardly you gotta say it's gonna be serious it's gonna be a mission <laughs> and it's going to take some discipline. Um, uh, yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's how I can co-sign that. that. That's how I, so I don't know if you got the fallout. I forgot that I was on camera. I thought I put you up. I didn't, I fell out in my chair. Literally that's on record by the way. Um, so <laughs> right uh, with that, we are buying name brand purses, but don't have the money in the wallet. That that's that's what I heard. Don't you. own a home, it, mm -hmm. right? Or 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 what do they say? Um, it, it's 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 this shift that we have to make that if we are trying to keep up with the Joneses, whatever we're doing for the public eye, but but 
behind the scenes were, were unhappy. You, you said emotional poverty. Behind the scenes were unhappy. Um, behind the scenes, our children spend no time with us. But Be behind the, the <laughs> Cheyenne, the Joneses are broke too. Come on now, what are we talking about, right? Because again, <laughs> to Summer's point, there's so many people who are wealthy by what number is in their bank account but they don't value their life. They don't value their existence. And honestly, my, my heart hurts for the individuals who are left here after those people have decided, it's a decision, decided to take their lives. And hear me, hear me, someone who has battled with, it's because it's still today, I believe that that mental health, the battle with mental health is, is like an addiction to alcohol, to drug. I believe it's the same thing. Um, I, I believe it is spiritual, um, not just something that people, that people experience. So let me be very clear with what I'm saying here. Um, it is a decision to not seek the help that you get. Um, it, it, it is. And, and when you know that you're in this position and you're completely overwhelmed because of what is going on in your life and you don't seek the help that you need for mental health, for financial poverty, for whatever, business development, right? You don't know how to automate your systems. You get help. You can't just Google university or YouTube university your way out of these situations that can really have a, a long lasting damaging effect on your life and the people that you love. And I'm gonna make this other really, 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 really bold statement. And this is not to be offensive, it is to be real. Um, and so I say this with all the love. What I don't want, and I know my, my, my panelists can, can attest to this, what we do not want to see is you or anyone you're connected to on the corner with a sign trying to raise funds for a funeral. We don't want to see anyone in your family standing on the corner doing a car wash or a cookout, raising money for your funeral. But if we're, if we're gonna go there, we might as well go all the way there. Right, we, we, we can add into this discussion on um, a, a life insurance and we can, we can talk about credit and all of the, the, the interesting ways to begin making more money. All of that is fine, but on a fundamental level, let's make the, let, let's talk about the root, which we've done today, but, but let's also drive it all the way home to where it's past this, well, I desire to make more money. Is your desire strong enough to where you're not gonna leave yourself or your family in a position where they're standing on the corner with a sign asking for funding to lay you to rest? Is it that serious? Have you been in your situation so long enough that from this conversation, from this point forward, you are actually going to do what is required of you to change your situation for the long haul. <laughs> that, that, it, it, it goes, we, we all three said it. How do you get out and stay out of poverty? All three of us said the same thing in a different way. We all said decision-making. We all said decision-making. I know that one was real heavy, but I have one more question before we land the plane today. It comes back to this conversation that we're having around being positioned for wealth, conversations around financial management. I wanna talk about having this conversation at the table. Mm. Cheyenne, Summer, how do we begin prioritizing table talks about family finances? Let's make this one, this is our last question today. Let's make it super practical for all of our guests who joined us today and everyone who's watching the replay. How do we prioritize 
tabletops about family finances, looping our kids into these discussions, letting them know what's going on and how do we equip them to become adults who are also building generational wealth. The floor is yours, ladies. You know what? I used to think that, you know, um, when I got married, we would sit down as a family and have these nice little meetings like every Friday. And we would talk about this and talk about that at these family um, meetings, right? And, and, and that was what I envisioned in my brain. And I think over the course of, uh, of my marriage that I thought, well, we don't have those meetings like I thought we should have. But then I hear our adult children calling saying, hey, dad, I'm thinking about buying a car. What is the smartest way to do this? And I, and I, and I, and I say to myself, you know what? We didn't have those meetings like I thought we should, but it's happening. They're hearing, they're watching, they're learning from, from what we are doing and from our conversations. You know? And so there's been multiple times the adult children have called home you know, and asked, you know, what should we do about this? How should, I, how should I handle this financial situation? Or I'm in this situation. Can you send me some money to bail me out? So I have watched, um, I have watched Ghazi, uh, my husband, say no, you know, to the children when they have been in situations. And, you know, as a mother, I'm like, ooh, you know, it's hard. But when I see him say, say that no, I know that what he is doing is giving them the same no that I got, which is going to change their life. And then we see the progress. We see the growth. We see the development because they had to go through the hard thing, um, right? So mm. for the two children that actually live with us, it is a daily, it is just daily conversation. My 13-year-old my probably knows more about credit than the average um, person. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then it's when they, it's just little things. We don't have the nice little neat family meetings, but it's little things. My son texted me today and said, mom, I want to go to Las Vegas. And I said, son, you have a job. You have a job. He works here on the farm. He gets paid for his work here. He's 13, right? So if you want to go to Las Vegas, research what it's going to cost you to fly there research how much a hotel was going to cost you. And not that I would actually make him pay for all of that, but I want you to understand in real life. So it is the real life application, things that he asked for. He wants a bike right now. So how much is it going to cost you? Um, so my son, my 13 year old, he has, he's had his own debit card and his own bank account, probably since he was like nine years old. Um, Ghazi and I let him go into Target. He filled his basket up with things that he wanted to buy. And when he got to the checkout, he didn't have enough money on his debit card. Now we are holding up the line and Ghazi's saying, hurry up, like give him the money or something, you know, use your card. And I'm going, no, nope. They got to wait. Sorry, because life lesson is happening right now. Yes. And I need this 13 year old child to understand that you can't just go swipe that card, not knowing how and, and fill your basket up, not knowing how much money you have in your account already to spend. Wow. So, so it is the real life when they, when it, when life is happening, letting them go through it as a child so that they will be prepared when they are adults. It may not be the nice, neat little sit down, let's have a family meeting and talk about money. And last thing I want to say about this, which I say all the time when I'm speaking is as parents, we teach our children. I learned these things. I, I when I grew up, we, I had to pray before all of my meals. I prayed before I went to bed. I had to take a bath every night. Um, you know, all of those nice, neat little things, all those little disciplines that your parents taught you, right? Um, all those things. Money should be the same thing. It should be a natural, normal conversation every day. Just like, dude, you better pray before you, are you about to pick up that spoon without, before you prayed? You know, it should be the same um, natural thing like every single day because no matter what we got to have it we got to have money we got to have money in order to live so that's all I had to say hey amen summer do you have anything as we land the plane and wrap up this incredible discussion today um just really quick uh, and I do need to wrap up because of course yep. virtual world has us back to back now right um the, the main thing is don't be embarrassed about your situation. 
uh, explain what your income is to your kids and go over your budget to your kids. That's the main thing. They're not going to learn from what ifs and future talk. They want to see the right here and right now. And when you show them your budget, trust me, I did it with my sons when I was very young. I showed them what the budget was and we went grocery shopping. My kids were putting things back out the cart onto the shelves. We don't have the money for this, mama. We don't have the money for this yet. We'll, we'll do, get it next week. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so they're not, they, they knew to not ask for certain types of cereal. They knew to not ask for certain, because they saw the money. And they saw like, we only have $125 for groceries this week or whatever it might be. And that is like real life implementation into your family, allowing them to know what is truly happening right now. Amen and amen. Everyone, thank you so much. Cheyenne, Summer, all of our guests who are with us on the back VIP room and, and joining us live and watching the replay. Thank you so much for joining us and having this discussion on being positioned, getting positioned and staying in position for generational wealth. Join us as the, the rest of today as we celebrate Woman in Action Day. We have the proclamation presented by the Phoenix mayor. It is big, cute, and all of that. But truly, we are so grateful that you were with us again for another business boot camp series segment. We will be back again next month for another dynamic discussion. Until then, watch the replay, share it with another entrepreneurial leader who can benefit from this discussion today. Continue to be willing and continue to take in intentional action whereby you become disciplined in your decision making because it will change the trajectory of your life for you and for generations to come. Until next time, God bless.